Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the removal and installation of the interior door panel for a 2003 to 2006 Chevrolet SSR. If you're an SSR owner, you may be well aware of some of the issues that require you to gain access to the inside of the door, which of course requires you to remove the door panel to get in there. Some of them include the door latch assembly, which gets corroded and requires replacement with a refurbished unit a door handle that may have a loose bolt on it that doesn't allow you to open the door from the outside at times. Then you may want to change the tip-in amount for your window because it's not properly fitting within the window seal on your roof. You have a door check on your door that makes noise and you're replacing it if you were lucky enough to find a replacement one that works. Or you're just doing some simple things like maybe upgrading the speakers. There, but there's a long list of reasons why you might want to be inside the door, but they all go through the door panel getting removed from the door. So I'm gonna show you those steps. And the reason I'm showing you the driver's side, there's one extra step with regard to the wire harness that's connected to the switch for the mirror adjustment. So we'll go through that. I'm gonna show you some of the supplies and tools necessary for this in just a moment. And with that, some of those are optional things regarding problems I've come across, such as the pull handle bezel here. Often the tabs break and I ended up using some double-sided tape to secure it. And when you get inside the door, there's the water barrier that you might want to pull back to gain access to some things that you need to gain access to inside the door itself. And adhering that back to the door requires some adhesive strips, so I'll show you the solution I've got for that. So let's switch over and look at the supplies, and then we'll get to removing the door panel and then putting it back in. Again, this is a quick and easy video. Hopefully, if you find it helpful, make sure you hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe, and let's get to it. Here are the tools and supplies that are involved in this particular video. On the left-hand side, we have a 10 millimeter socket with a quarter inch drive ratchet handle and an extension. I have three pry tool examples on the screen. The red and yellow ones are actually used in this video. The white one could be used in, in place of the red one. Both the red and white one have some stiffness to them to be able to be used to pry the door panel away from the door. The yellow pry tool is flexible and softer, so it won't scratch the satin chrome or chrome pull handle bezel that's behind the door handle. There's a black plastic piece behind the door handle, so you need to remove that from behind the door handle to expose the bolt below that. So I use that softer one to assist me in that process. The roll of double-sided tape on the right-hand side is an optional thing. I've used the double-sided tape to secure the plastic trim piece behind the door handle to the satin chrome or chrome pull handle bezel because the one of the tabs is broken off. So this is of course an optional thing, but it has worked reasonably well. So you might consider some double-sided tape if you're in a similar situation. At the top of the screen, I have some 3M strip caulking that I use to help resecure the plastic weather barrier or water barrier. It's a plastic sheet that's behind the door panel and before the door itself. And the GM supplied Adhesive doesn't always work and I've tried some double-sided tape and that doesn't work for long, long periods of time But that strip caulking for 3M does seem to work really well So I'll include that information down in the description section of the video if you're looking to replace that on yours First step is to roll down the window this gives better access to the top end removal for the door panel so that's a quick and easy one. Press the button and roll down the window. Step two is to remove the door lock knob. Of course, you unscrew that from the rod that is connected to the door latch assembly and set this off in a safe location. Step three is to remove the plastic pull handle bezel from behind the door handle. You should get a pliable plastic pry tool to get behind the bezel. Often I'll grab it on this end here and squeeze a little bit. That'll give a little gap here. And then I run it around the edge to disengage the tabs. And in my particular case, since I have some broken tabs on this one, I also have some double-sided tape that I need to disengage. You don't wanna have too harsh of a tool here because the trim Bezel piece here will get scratched, so you just want to be gentle with that and then work it out. And the tabs will tend to get broken on this. That's why I have some double-sided tape in there 
to hold up on this end. These two plastic tabs are all that hold it in to that assembly, so be careful with that, because these do break very easily. Step four is to remove the 10 millimeter headed bolt that's securing the pull handle bezel to the door. There are two additional bolts behind this bezel, but first we need to remove this one. This is a 10 millimeter socket. I have a quarter inch drive with a long extension just so I can get around the door handle here. So I pull that out, reach in, and then unscrew that bolt. And sometimes it's easier to take this ratchet off. And set that, the bolt is the same for all three locations. So just set that off to the side in a safe location. Step five is to then remove the pull handle bezel. You could either have a satin chrome version or this chrome version. And yes, I did retrofit this onto my 2004 SSR when I first bought it. This is the style that was available on the 2006 in the interior chrome package. So I'm just gonna pull this off. There's some clips here that are still holding this on. So you go from the back here and gently pull. And that first clip unclips there. And then there's another clip right here. Again, gently pull and it should unlatch like that. And then you can remove the bezel by pulling the handle like that and then set this off in a safe location. Step six is to remove the two remaining 10 millimeter headed bolts that are here and here. And that is the part that's securing the pull handle to the door itself. So you have a secure handle to pull on. It's securing the door panel itself as well. And then after that, we have some plastic clips that are holding the bottom portion in. And there's some metal clips on the top part here for this decorative trim piece that put, holds it to the top part of the door. But let's remove these. So I'll fast forward through this stuff in the video. Now we're at step seven, which is to release the clips around the outer edge of the door panel so that it, the bottom side will become free. There are some metal clips on the top side here, and I actually have an extra trim piece here where I get to show you the inside part of that. And this is the same driver's side door one. There's some metal clips here, here, and here, which are on the top side. So you pull the door panel out from the bottom and then pull upwards to release it from the door. But before we do that on this, driver's side we have to make sure that the connector for this wiring harness for this side mirror adjustment switch is released before we pull the door panel away. So in the earlier part of the video I showed you some plastic pry tools you can use this or if you have something like this something that's not going to mar the paint underneath uh, as you pry on this so you just need to insert it in between the door panel you may need to lift up on a, a little bit to get it in there and then pry upward and you hear it pop like that as the clips release and work around the door panel. And you can put your fingers underneath once the gap's wide enough to assist with that. And they should release all the way around. And okay, those are all now released. We're now at step eight to release the clips at the upper end of the door panel. Again, we need to wiggle it a little bit. I kind of have to block the view a little bit here. So I'm gonna lift up and wiggle it on both sides. Okay, and you can hear it disengage. And now we have this wiring harness connector here, which hopefully is visible. There's a little plastic tab here you have to lift up and pull out. So with that, you have the door panel removed and you can go ahead and set it off to the side. Now that we have the door panel removed, you can see the inside of the door itself or actually the water or vapor or weather barrier, depending on what your terminology is. The original factory securing method is these strips of adhesive. And over time, as you start pulling this up from the door, they fail to secure the vapor water weather barrier to the door again so in the past i had been using some double-sided tape and that appeared to work at least for a year or so but over time that seems to not work very well 
So in lieu of that, I found a better solution, which I've actually used on the passenger side door. In the earlier part of the video, I showed you this 3M caulking box, the strip caulk, which I have in that picture. And this is what I've been using in lieu of the double-sided tape. You probably want to use some protective gloves, it says on the box, to, while you handle it. But it's a series of strips that you can use then to adhere, and lift up the plastic here, put the caulk, strip caulk in place and then push on the plastic here to secure it again to the door. Seems to work very well and seems to be reusable. I have had no problem with this. So down in the description section of this video, I'll put a link. I'll find a supplier for this again so that you can have access to that. At least that's what I've been using. Or you can find a similar product of your own, but something that will re-secure the plastic to the door would be a good idea. One last thing to look at here is the door handle itself. This has been a source of problems for some people. The earlier design from GM had a thin amount of plastic here at the pivot point for the door handle. And with prop the proper amount of pressure or you know, plastic just getting brittle, the plastic would break at this hinge and then the handle assembly would wobble. And now this is normally secured by a bolt here, but the door handle wouldn't be properly secured tight enough into the door to fit into here, which would make it not, when you would move the door handle, it wouldn't actually move that latch piece here. It wouldn't move that properly, so it wouldn't release the, the door latch. So the solution from GM was to create a piece that had thicker amount of plastic here, and that seems to be working. I had no problems with the replacement ones, at least for most owners that I'm aware of that did solve the problem, but there's still owners out there that may have the original style, or even if it's a thicker style, there's a fix-it kit from Dictator, and I believe it's sold through simple-engineering.com as well, which uh, basically puts some metal pieces on here to reconstruct, um, kind of like the old um, Bionic Man kind of thing. There's some metal pieces that go in here to secure this all again so that the store handle will once again properly rotate as it should and then move this section properly in the portion on the door. So if you have a door handle issue like that, you, know, you might want to check that out. And of course, you'll have to remove the door panel to get to it, and, and now you know where to look. Before you install the door panel again, you might want to check the plastic retaining clips to make sure that in this case of the white ones that both sides are present. And in the case of the yellow ones that all the ribs on the side are intact. Those tend to be more than single use, but not many more than single use. So you might want to check them out. And I obtained these particular clips from clipsandfasteners.com. So I'll put a link down in the description section to each of those. If you look closely at the yellow ones, the label on that particular plastic bag actually listed as a forward part. There are equivalent GM parts, but th these look the most similar to the ones that I had on the door panel before. You should also be able to find these at most any local auto parts store. These are very common GM plastic retaining clips. The installation of the door panel is pretty much the reverse of the removal. You know, things you need to be careful of is make sure you get the door lock rod through the hole on the top part of the door panel before you push on the top of the door panel to engage the top metal clips. And also make sure you push all the way around the edges to get the plastic clips to fully engage. Then install the bolts into the door pull handle. And you don't have to go crazy to over tighten those, just snug. Same goes for the bolt behind the door handle in the pull handle bezel. If you get too aggressive with that, you could crack the plastic, so just make sure you get it nice and snug, but not too tight. And for the plastic bezel behind the door handle, make sure you snap that in gently. You don't want to break the plastic tabs off of that, or if they are already broken, you can use some double-sided tape like I have on mine. If you found this video informational and you liked it, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.